What is going on, Juju Gang? I hope everyone's having a wonderful Tuesday. Happy Tesla stock trading is back action. Three days off. It seems like every now and then we need one of these extra days to recoup and recover. Tesla up like 3% as I record this on Tuesday morning post Labor Day. But we got a lot to talk about as to what happened this weekend on Tesla Twitter. It kind of went crazy, to be honest. If you're not on Tesla Twitter, or I guess Tesla X, I should probably call it. Um, you kind of missed out this weekend. And I can say that because I mostly missed out this weekend. I was away from the phone. I tried to be off of X as much as I possibly could. I know it's, it's usually a feeble attempt. But this weekend, it seems like Tesla Twitter went kind of crazy. First thing that happened, and I'll, I'll tie this into where I think the stock uh, price action um, is, is headed here into the next quarter. But first thing that happened is Gary Black. You guys know Gary Black, manager of Future Fund. Um, he regularly makes CNBC appearances to talk about Tesla, super famous on Tesla Twitter, got essentially annihilated this weekend. Now, for context, as you guys know, t Tesla Model S and X prices have essentially been cut out the wazoo. Um, and Gary Black is making the point, why doesn't Tesla invest more in advertising instead of costing one or two billion dollars with price cuts you know estimated why not spend half of that on advertising to hit the same unit volumes okay to hit the same unit volume so he's saying essentially what's the point of tesla uh, of not running any ads but spending all this money to essentially waste their product okay so he got essentially annihilated obviously from tesla fans but that's not the new story here the new story is that Gary Black, someone replied to Gary Black and they said to him, hey Gary, if you know so much about business, why aren't you a hundred billionaire yourself? Um, <laughs> and which like, you know, is, 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 is just an appeal to authority fallacy, right? But Elon replied to this saying exactly laughing emojis. Elon is essentially stirring the pot here in the worst way possible. And you guys know where I stand with Gary Black. I think he's quite astute when it comes to Tesla Wall Street points. Um, I very much value his opinion as to what he has to say. I'm trying to cross the street here as I try to multitask. Um, but, you know, he makes a lot of good points often. And I, I really do frequent his Twitter. Um, and I have nothing bad to say about the guy. But he got absolutely annihilated this weekend. I kind of feel bad about it, to be quite honest. Uh, but anyways, the point still stands that should Tesla, and I'll just pull over here to my usual spot, should Tesla do these price cuts or should they advertise? And here's my thoughts on this. And by the way, I have a little um, surprise video coming out, um, I think on Bradford Ferguson's channel, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, but, we'll, but Bradford and I are going to be talking today about advertising. Now, Here's my thoughts on this. Should Tesla advertise? Yes. Should Tesla do an education campaign? Yes. The the broad scope of the general population do not know anything about electric vehicles. I'm telling you this from experience, from talking to average consumers that are car shopping. I'm not in the car business. I don't sell cars, but I'm telling you, friends of mine, family friends that have been uh, passing in, and it seems like a lot of people are talking car buying right now. In fact, two weeks ago, I was talking to um, um, an uncle and he was talking about his uh, car that's about six years old now. And he's like, you know, it's kind of getting old. Maybe I want to switch. Which, by the way, it's kind of crazy to me that people want to switch cars that fast. I, I know six years, is it is what it is. But people think that's generally old now for having a car, which I think is kind of crazy. Um, like when I bought the Model 3, I was like, I think 10 years. I think I'm going to keep this car for 10 years. That's my plan, right? It's to keep this car for 10 years. I don't really see anything more than I need in a car. Uh, anyways, that's besides the point. He's saying, look, I don't know about the infrastructure. I don't know about charging. He's like, I, you know, we go camping a couple times a year and I don't know if it'll be able to charge. And I just told him this. I said, look, you don't buy a car for the outlier scenarios. You don't buy a, a different car because one or two times a year, you're going to might go camping and you need to off road on it. You don't buy a different car because it doesn't fit the 99% of your use cases and your, and your use cases. He didn't know about charging what kind of volts to get. I refer actually someone to buy a model um, Y last week. If you want to check out my referral, like I have it on my, uh, on my Twitter or my X, I should say, 
So go check that out if you're looking to buy a car, which by the way, I would, I'd very much appreciate if someone used my referral code uh, in America explicitly, because then I'd get the three months full self-driving and you'd also get a discount. But I want to, I, I really want to, I want to test up this full self-driving for the channel. Uh, anyways, besides the point, and you, you guys know this because I don't have a subscription up here in Canada, so it's not an option. Um, okay, so my point standing that advertising should definitely be something they look into. And they are advertising right now. I should probably clarify that. But when I say advertising in the general sense, it's like those YouTube video campaigns, maybe TV commercials, stuff that when people think are ads are ads. I get it. Google search are ads. I know that's an ad. People that are, are, are media buyers know that, 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 that those are ads. But the average population doesn't look at Google search as advertising, uh, in the general sense for autos at least, okay? Now, here's the other kind of epiphany, uh, you know, that I kind of had. And this is not a Stockholm Syndrome. This is not an Elon's always right um, point that I've come across. But I've come to this general conclusion a little bit here that I think Elon looks at the general EV Chinese market landscape and goes, the Chinese are absolutely crushing us when it comes to EV adoption. The only way that we, st that we fight uh, or that we stand a fighting chance against the Chinese EV companies out there in the long haul is to dramatically lower the costing of our cars to ourselves to produce and also to consumers and passing those along. I think Elon looks at the risk, and I've talked about this before, it's a little bit tinfoil hatty, but the risk that there stands to be geopolitically in the next 20, 10 or 20 years, if there are the majority of EV manufacturers out there being Chinese EV manufacturers, because remember, it's like owning your phone. In 10, in 10 years, we're gonna be talking about our cars in the same way that we talk about having our phones today. You know, the, all the surveillance issues, the monetization issues, the ethical dilemmas that come with our smartphone today that we didn't foresee 10 years ago. The same thing is gonna happen in 10 years with EVs. Do, does government ha do governments have the uh, authority to pause your car? Do they have the ability to see where you've been? I get it. Today it's early. We don't get that. But mark my words: in ten years from now, these ethical dilemmas that we talk about with our smartphones are going to be the same, one for one, into our EVs. And I think Elon sees this, and he goes. And I get it, a lot of you guys might be saying, look, Elon does not say this, the order book is light, he needs to lower prices. And there's a degree of that too, but I think the general big vision here, aside from sustainable energy, is that there needs to be, the, you know, the people that own transportation in the future with the same ethical dilemmas that exist for a smartphone today need to be pro uh, free speech and anti-government authority. That's just the bottom line. And if Twitter X is any proof of that, I feel way better owning a Tesla in 10 or 15 years when these dilemmas show up than I would owning an insert Chinese EV manufacturer. And I get that that's a little bit tinfoil hatty. Yeah, she's going conspiracy theory, but just wait 10 years. I promise you these are gonna be the, the, the topics du jour back uh, or, uh, then. Anyways, price cuts. I get it, we should advertise what's a couple hundred million dollars on video ad campaigns. But here's the thing. I think this is happening. I think the reason why we see the amount of cyber trucks that we see getting shipped off here, there, Europe, New Zealand, is because, or not Europe, uh, New Zealand, um, all across America on these trucks. I think not only is there gonna be a, a simultaneous launch event probably, but I think they're shooting and they're filming for something big. Maybe it's a Super Bowl commercial, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's a big ad campaign, national media campaign, I don't know, but there is something happening here with respect to advertising, with respect to video campaigns that I think is 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 really important to, to, to stay patient on. It's gonna happen. Tesla's already spending, I think, tens of millions of dollars on Google search ads, maybe upwards of, of 10, I think they did them, I think I looked at some spy tools and they're around 30K a day in ad spend. Now, how reliable those are are really up to up to that particular ad tool. But as we get more data as the months pass, uh, 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 continue here, I'll get better data on the advertising and feel free to follow me for that sort of stuff. But anyways, I'm excited of where everything is headed. The stock price is the stock price. It is what it is. Remember, macro is macro still does own the day, but Tesla is showing some independent st uh, strength besides that. A few things we need next earnings, margins to bottom which is 
probably not going to happen to be fair now with the price cuts so it's kind of like this like never ending margin cycle uh cycle down we need margins to rebound we need cybertruck to come out i still think cybertruck coming out will be a, a watershed moment for tesla uh, and then fsd and i'm going to leave the last minute of this video talked about FSD because if you know anything about Tesla, you should know everything about FSD. And the way that the confidence meter for Elon is spiking on FSD talks, the way that when Elon live streams FSD, the confidence that he projects, I think is so massive. And again, FSD puts everything to shame. Forget about auto sales, margins, blah, blah, blah. You can sell these cars at cost. If FSD works, that makes Tesla's unit economics absolutely nutty and i get it me and you sitting here and me usually have i've been historically very very um bearish on timeline for fsd but what's undeniable is the confidence that elon is seeing with version 12 and, and so remember in july he said he thinks he's very confident level four or five comes up by end of the year is this going to be a continual sandbagging moment or are we gonna hopefully get some better news by the end of the year Thanks for watching to the end. Yash, sign it off. Have an amazing week ahead. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.